My name is Andrew Sakowitz. You know, welcome everyone. Uh, I appreciate you coming here. And a special thanks to the existing users of the System Monitor. Uh, I recognize a lot of faces from all over the world. I really want to say thank you very much, really, from the bottom of my heart, because of you, uh, we have this uh, product. So it's a great accomplishment to all of us. Uh, thank you, thank you, yes, yes, very much. Uh, so those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Andrew Sekowitz. I work in professional services. I don't work for uh, product development. And uh, the idea was uh, to uh, develop a tool to help me as a consultant troubleshooting the systems. And of course, all of you, most of you, are in the same uh, situation. Uh, years ago, it was very simple. It was just a client server, uh, ArcMap connecting to SDE, and we all developed scripts, um, geodatabase, Oracle scripts. But as you can see, Esri platform has grown significantly, and so is uh, complexity of that. So it became harder and harder for us to, to monitor. Uh, there's another thing that it's uh, important to realize. The, the highlighted areas in, in yellow are actually not Esri software. It's the underlying infrastructure that we depend. Um, I'm not expecting you to understand the, the architecture, but just looking at this, you know, if you really wanted to sabotage that, it's so easy, yes? I mean, it's just, you know, maybe here or somewhere. It's very easy to break it, very easy to break it. And Esri platform relies on this infrastructure uh, to be dependable, to be available. I always, you know, ask, you know, uh, you know the audiences, you know, uh, has any, anybody run into a case where you lost a disk where config store was, was deployed? What happened to the rest of the system? Just disappeared, yes? Yeah. And that's why we need these monitoring tools. Uh, we, we, ideally, we want to monitor so we can be proactive. But if something happens, we want to be able to quickly resolve that. So that's one, uh, one motivation. Uh, what are the other motivations? The other motivations are that ArcGIS platform is uh, not the culprit, often is a victim of the following use cases. So overloaded systems. How many of you have more than 100 services, map services? Yes. So it's very easy to, for us to deploy it, run out of memory, crash, and call tech support and say, uh, ArcGIS server is not work working, yes? And I can see how this happens. It can make sense. It makes sense. Now, you know what the greatest irony is? We, didn't, we don't even have any users yet. We already crashed on publishing. So that's one thing. Um, how about that? You know, on stable infrastructure. Uh, VMware, we all use virtualization. And I, you know, I've talked about this. But the virtualization idea is the consolidation so we can give as little resources as is necessary to our solutions. But how does our IT know exactly how much infrastructure do we need for our Azure platform? They don't, they don't. So what they do is they just give us a little slice and then if we need more, maybe they will add more. Now with ArcGIS Monitor, you can have talking points so you can say, hey, we actually need more resources. Uh, how about uh, you know, the, your, your case, you know, when you lose connection to the config store? Uh, that's also very uh, detrimental. So there are many examples. The bottleneck, yes. Uh, so if you're a new user to ArcGIS Server and you're publishing, maybe you mentioned that you have 100 services. So you keep publishing and you keep the default instances, which is uh, one and two. Uh, what would happen? It's, it's just like a toll boot, yes? So you have this powerful machine, maybe with 64-core uh, uh, CPUs, but there's only one one toll boot open. So of course this will create a bottleneck. 
You know, so we have these three cases. And really, if you think about these three cases, you can solve probably more than 90% of the problems. Um, so most of you are, or you know, some of you are GIS administrators. And you face these challenges, just like me, consultant, facing the challenges. When I go on site and I meet with, with you and your IT, <laughs> We're dealing you know, with multiple administrators, multiple monitoring tools. Uh, data is collected reactively, so it might be or available or not, and makes the correlation of our findings very challenging. So then you, administrator, you are responsible for uh, fixing this problem, and uh, you simply don't have tools. You don't have the eyes on the entire system. Uh, because the, the idea of that if you are ArcGIS server administrator and you have access to remote desktop to only ArcGIS server, and if there's an expectation that you will be able to solve the WebGIS problems, that's not a practice that doesn't work. You need to have eyes on everything. And the bottom line is it's challenging for us to identify what is the root cause and how to um, troubleshoot that. So, um, you probably might have been one of a uh, 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 person just trying to figure out where to go. Uh, should I call Oracle? Should I call Esri? Should I check all of these? And, uh, you know, ArcGIS Monitor will help with this. One, there's one thing about uh, ArcGIS Modern I want to stress is it's, it's very uh, easy for us to understand that it's, it's for admins, yes? So if you're troubleshooting, it's for administrators. So we detect, diagnose, and troubleshoot. But there is a value of addressing other, other potential stakeholders, like managers. Managers are interested in usage. Managers are interested in underutilized resources. Uh, managers want to uh, reduce the administration cost. Somebody approached me at the, at the kiosk at the showcase and they say, we're interested in our GS monitor because we really need to reduce the cost and we, we cannot have a DBA and network guy and we just want some sort of automation. I think it's an excellent idea. If, if it works, absolutely. And let's not forget why we're doing all of it. It's, it's the end users. So this is the challenge to everybody. I will have a slide later about the, the tools and integration is that whatever we do, we need to make sure that we're meeting user, uh, user expectations and improving uh, their uh, uh, perception. Uh, is this tool for anybody? Is it something like you can, you can go to Amazon and download and self-diagnostic tool, you know? Or do you need to go to the medical school and maybe, you know, get your, you know, doctorate uh, degree? I, 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 I think it's somewhere in between. You, you have to have some knowledge. You, you simply have to have some knowledge. Um, so what is the knowledge? Administration, architecture, a little bit platform. Um, anybody can, you know, let me just go back this. Anybody can download the tool and install, and it will tell you something. And maybe they will answer, give you the answers that you need. But the chances are that at some point you will run into a case that the tool will be just telling you, giving you all the messages and alerts, and you might not be able to interpret this fast enough or correctly. So. Um, So this section is for primary for those who are not familiar with uh, ArcGIS Monitor, uh, because I was asked to produce, uh, to, to present uh, introduction to ArcGIS Monitor, so I, I just need to uh, go through that phase. If you are uh, considering ArcGIS Monitor, what are the top, top level things that you need to do is? Number one is, and we'll get to the detail architecture soon, but I'm just sharing you with uh, my lessons learned. MongoDB, we use MongoDB as our repository. A uh, nice, nice thing about this is that if you use the community version, it's free, and uh, it meets all our big data requirements, so uh, there was a nice selection. The challenge is because if it's free and, and open source, then many IT 
simply say, no, we cannot deploy that. And I understand this. So there is a choice. You could, you could have an enterprise version, but you need to pay, you know, your, you need to pay for the Mongo, MongoDB license, or you need to work out something with your IT to allow the community version to, uh, to be deployed. Um, when it comes to security, I'll get, get into uh, as well. Uh, everything is secured by the operating system. So Mongo has the, the bind IP that allows only requests from the local machine. That's how we secure the Mongo. The second bullet, uh, identify environments. We, we need to plan. Um, some of you I know uh, have very large uh, deployments, uh, even global, multiple data centers all over the world. So we need to sit down and plan how are we going to break it down because the effective reports will be only, uh, they will be effective if they are grouped correctly. So for example, if you have both gas and electric solutions in your, in your organizations, would you like to see all, all these uh, servers grouped into one kind of uh, energy name, or you want to break it down, gas and electric, into separate? I'm not saying that you must, but you just need to think it through. Uh, I would recommend that you, you break it down into as smaller groups as possible. Uh, centralized and distributed, so uh, we will cover this shortly. Uh, the next thing is the credentials. It's very easy to install ArcGIS Monitor, but when we start adding these counters, we need credentials. And the number one credential is the admin, system admin. So if you don't have a service account that has an admin to all the machines, you need to obtain this before we deploy ArcGIS Monitor. Otherwise, you can spend several days waiting for the approvals, and maybe at the end you might not even get the approval. And the same with ArcGIS Server and Portal. So there's just a lot of credentials that we need to prepare. Uh, and if you install on-premises, this is my, my, uh, my experience, is we want to have a dedicated person. If, if there is expectations that we'll install ArcGIS Monitor will work and we'll send us an email and when we get the email we will, uh, we will react to this and nobody's really taking care of managing the ArcGIS Monitor, that in practice doesn't work. You, you need to adjust, you need to add, you need to remove, you need to restart um, because the, the, the IT patches oftentimes uh, shut down the services or passwords change and the services stopped working. So we need to have some eyes on the ArcGIS monitor. Not a lot, but you know, I, I, I think that it's not completely autopilot uh, technology. So uh, when it comes to installation in our help, you can, you can follow help and um, there are system requirements. So uh, before we do the, uh, I'm not going to demo installation because it would take us uh, too long, but uh, you can take my word that it's actually very simple. It's just next, next, next. For those of you who have used previous version, you will be pleasantly, uh, maybe not surprised, but you will be, uh, uh, your experience will be better. Let's just go through the, uh, the main components of the, the ArcGIS monitor. So number one is we have uh, your production system. It's right here in this box. Nothing runs on the reproduction system. ArcGIS Monitor is agent-free, agent-less. We don't put any agents on your production system. It's unlikely, unlike many other monitoring tools that require agents on every machine. It has a pros and cons. If you have a local agent, you can collect all sorts of information and bypass all the security. But if something is running here and it's your ArcGIS server, well, it, they use as resources, so you will be, uh, you will be paying the, uh, the, the license, you know, for, um, uh. so everything is done remotely. Now, as I mentioned, when you install, uh, this monitoring service will run as a, you, you, you right click and you set the credentials as a person who has admin rights to all the machines and then will inherit the credentials from, from the service. When it comes to ArcGIS server and portal uh, or database, there are, that we're using the credentials. So 
install everything on one machine, there are two components. So there's the monitoring service and the web server with the MongoDB. I, this is our starting. You really could monitor a lot with four core machines. So if you're, if you're wondering, you know, how much hardware do I need to install ArcGIS monitor? You know, the four core machines and 16 gigs uh, and 50 gigs of uh, disk space, it, it will take you far. Now, if, you, if you're one of these admins who like to monitor aggressively, you know, you really demand the 60 second resolution on everything, you might need to uh, have a little bit more hardware. If you have additional solutions, so as I mentioned, gas and electric, so you split them into two services, then for each collection, you just add extra two CPUs. But I recommend that you, you start small and see how it's working for you. And don't use this as a, um, as a, a ultimate guide because internally we're monitoring a lot on uh, an eight core machine. Uh, we're using some techniques like uh, we use resolutions and offsetting, I will talk about this later. Um, so um, if somebody has a quick question, you know, clarifying, uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer. Uh, and of course, I'll be available uh, at the end. If you have a global solution, uh, yeah. Could you go back to your last slide? When you say um, second monitoring service, are you talking about a separate ArcGIS monitor uh, installation on the same machine? No, it's a, it, to, if we need to have, if we need to monitor two solutions, you just right click and you create additional monitoring service, which is Windows service on the same machine. So everything runs here. Oops. Um, so in that case, you could put everything on one machine and monitor the entire world. Believe it or not, some customers have done it and it's working fine. Now, clearly, it requires some, some sort of connectivity. And if you find yourself that, that the messages are being dropped, well, that's not going to work, yes? But I would recommend always start with the centralized. Don't, don't get too, too sophisticated and distributed. It's cute, but it's, it's not uh, recommended. So try to make it work. Um, remember, uh, it's... If something doesn't come back, well, we just dropped one message. So it's not the end of the world. It's just the one reference point will be missing. Uh, but if you keep dropping messages all the time, it kind of defeats the point. So uh, there's another option is using distributed. And we're actually using this for uh, monitoring as a service. So we have a report server, which is on the right side. It's running in the cloud. And then we have... Uh, uh, some, you know, on the left, that it's closer to our uh, um, customer sites, uh, our production system. And I know a few of you are using this also monitoring when you have a report server, you know, on your premises, and these are deployed at your customer sites, and we're just using proxy that it's going. Uh, the slide also helps us really understand that there are two separate installations, and that will be the first thing, is that you select, do you want to reinstall the report server, or do you want to install the, the monitoring server? Um, and with that, you can deploy all these local uh, monitoring services on every machine. But we don't recommend that. Once it's because, um, it's just extra work, you know, and, and then you have upgrades and uh, it, it, a centralized solution is just more elegant and it's easier. Okay, so configuration. And that is a sign to me of a demo. So I will, I will try to demo, I'll, I'll see how we're doing on time. I think we're doing okay. Um, but what we, what we will do is uh, we will, uh, <laughs> I create a connection, register collection. We'll go through all these steps. So uh, it shouldn't be difficult for you to do it. I'm going to demo this quickly. And we'll... Okay, so 
when you install, you, you will have the administrator. So that's administrator. And when you install, by default, uh, the website should be running. So when I log in, it should be empty. There's nothing. It's just nothing is configured. But, but the installation would create a page for you, yes? So now we're configuring. So that we're configuring, you, you need to be on the administrator side, and you open the administrator. And uh, uh, I think I was... Um, Okay, so when you open, it's like this. There is nothing available. So I need to connect. All right, so to connect, I need to, I need to connect to my report server. You remember, um, we are doing, I need to connect from here to the right side, yes? Because right now I'm on this side. I need to connect to the report server. So w what is my... Um, what is my uh, credential? So this could be a, a test. Now it says host name and port. And you, you might say, okay, I, I installed, I already forgot what it is. So by default, it will be your uh, uh, local host or your host name and port 443. So you don't need to do anything. But because I have IIS running and, and 443 is already taken, then I, on my installation, I chose port uh, 444, yes? So this is the first thing. Do not install ArcGIS Monitor on a machine that has IIS because by default you will next, 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 and then you will find that the port is not available. Uh, so uh, local host 444. And um, default password is site, uh, and, um, and, and, and password is ArcGIS monitor without uh, space. So let's see if I spell this correctly. Okay, so, so I'm here, I am connected, and now it's time for us to configure things. And there should be nothing here. So if you click register, now it's the time for us to create this uh, collection, gas or electric. So uh, I will test. Uh, this is for email, it's just a... Um, All right, uh, you can fill out the metadata or not. So we have, we have this collection. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add the monitoring service. That actually will create a Windows service. So, um, and you see it, I picked up a port by default, 8,000. We're checking what ports are available. So. Uh, now, if I click that, it will start, you know, harassing me with a bunch of questions because it's Windows security, and I will, I just need to fight through that UI until it just stops. Uh, okay, all right, I killed that. So now, if I refresh, uh, you see, this is our report server, and I just created the monitoring service. So this is our collector, yes? Okay. So, um, so just to make sure that we created this, this blue dot, that's where we are. And now I'll try to connect to one machine. So let's, um, uh, I'm going to start with HTTP first, and I will tell you why. So if you click on this, uh, so this is test. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to use that URL. So what 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 I'm doing is I'm testing I'm adding any any URL any URL. So this is our demo site. 
Uh, it doesn't have security, so, uh, and the important things is selecting uh, the intervals, so it's one minute. Now, if this URL is very lightweight, has a you know, good heartbeat, then yeah, let's keep it uh, every 60 seconds, one minute. But if it's expensive, you do not want to harass your system every 60 seconds, make sense? Some customers, they love this feature so much that, that they, they add like, you know, 100 URLs and ArcGIS Monitor becomes number one user on the system. <laughs> this, this is also not ideal, you know? <laughs> so, um, so if I click test and, you know, and it's working and it's telling us, okay, this is what we'll be configuring. Now, if I go immediately to my report server, um, oops. So if I go to my, uh, uh, oh, it's already here. Okay, excellent. So that's what we did. We just added URL and it's monitoring uh, response time. So that's our first dot. It took 0.48 seconds. Um, it's a 200 code, so it's good. Uh, content length is 1400. Do you, do you have a sense, yes? And we're not going to spend a lot of time, but just for kicks, you know, um, you, you would add your uh, system here. Now, for those of you who remember, I said the, the security is inherited from, uh, from the monitoring service. And look at the monitoring services running as a local system. I can, I can add, I can monitor my, my local, local machines, but what needs to happen is you need to change that to your, your admin credentials. Make sense? I'm not going to waste time on this. So um, let's just uh, add, and I will say uh, local host. And this will take a little bit while, but it will come back. So does anybody have any, any questions about what I've done so far? OK. Yes. Two things. One, the system diagram that you showing, is that available online anywhere? anywhere? No, it's, it's not yet. It's a simplified version of that is available on, on, on online. But if you install ArcGIS Monitor, uh, local help will, will have this. We're also working on the new help for 1061 that it will be available. Uh, no, I did not. I only showed you how to do it. I actually didn't complete that. I didn't want to spend time on that. Yep. Exactly. Which ports are required to be open? So, uh, you know, 443, of course, 27 and 17, uh, the, all the ports are listed on, 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 on our help. So at the end, maybe I'll, I'll just show you this. Um, uh, and then, of course, when you, when you create a collector, you, you saw that it was port 8000, but it will auto-discover what's available. That database, what is it called? MongoDB. Is that the only option? That's the only option. Uh, yes? Yeah, I have a question. You mentioned about the uh, admin rights. Uh, do you need, uh, just need the system admin rights on the machine you installed? Monitor or you need the system um, the For all the machine that you, that you want the target, yes. So one more question and then I'll be available all evening, uh, but I just want everybody to be, yes sir. You said it wasn't running under IIS, what web server is it running under? Is it auto it's, it's a, We have our own web server and our own mail server. Yes ma'am. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. So it's actually, you don't have to install anything. Uh, we don't have the redistribution rights. So all you need to do is download the, the binary of the Mongo and put it on your machine. And then when you, when you install ArcGIS Monitor, we'll ask you, where are these binaries? And then we do everything else. So really it's more download rather than installation. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, so you, you know, the next thing you would do is you will start adding the counters. And of course, there are ArcGIS, database, there are many different counters, and we'll go through some examples of this in a moment. Um, what are the typical use cases? That's, that's a little bit different from what you've seen in System Monitor 3 and even uh, ArcGIS Monitor 6.0. So this UI is available, will be available in 10.6.1. But why, why am I starting with this? Because we are learning also, you know, how our users are using the system. And they, they say it's, it's really good, we get a lot of, we have a lot of information, but it's really hard for us to figure out how to navigate, how to prioritize, you know, uh, what's critical, what's not critical. So we developed this uh, new UI, and uh, let me just walk you through. So, when these alerts, um, when you add the counter, like I did the, the add counter for HTTP, we're setting automatically default alerts. So for example, if the response time is greater than three seconds, you know, alert us. Some of these are just tests. Uh, when we add ArcGIS server, we parse all the ArcGIS server uh, logs. So if there is a severe warning, there, there will be automatically alerts. So you can go and change this. You can say, don't alert me on this. Uh, if data is not collecting because the, the other machine is not available, there will be uh, data not collected. So when you come here, you look at the timestamps for your given collection, and you kind of, you try to analyze the cluster, and it will be telling you a lot of things. And one of the, the biggest challenges for us is to know uh, who is the culprit and who is the victim. Oftentimes we, 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 we go to victims and that's really good, spend a few times, you know, huddle and kiss, but then you need to move on to the, to the culprits, yes? You, this is where the problem is. Um, so here um, you see, you know, response time, response time. Response time is a victim, yes? So, okay, you identify that the response, the performance degraded, but you need to go into other things, you know, maybe ArcGIS server, the, what is in the logs, yes? Maybe something is not running. Do, do you follow me? You know, so, and a nice thing is that everything is coming in the cluster, and this page will be refreshing every two minutes, so you don't need to do anything. <laughs> And the next thing is, we will land on the moon. <laughs> but thank you, I, I know. And then th that's the beauty of what we're doing, because uh, uh, we're just listening to, to our customers, both internal and external. So uh, our colleagues said, like, okay, can you please refresh this page? So, um, okay, so, so you, you, you analyze the cluster, and then when you click on this, it will give you charts, and I'll, I'll demo in a moment. So you can visually assess the patterns, is it uh, infrequent, and other things. And then you go into details, and if you oftentimes, in the previous, you wanna say like, what is this ArcGIS server? I forgot the URL. How many of us always ask this question? What is the URL of the ArcGIS server? So these are the, the sources, the ArcGIS server URLs. These are the sources, the HTTP. So if you click on this, you know, uh, this should tell you the URL where, where I just configured. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense. Now, if we move on to details, so you're like, uh, the, the chart, so say, okay, I want to see the pattern of this. I mean, I know it's alerting, but I want to, see the pattern, so we click on this. I realize that I missed a lot of important information. So, what's important here is first, the distinction of critical and warnings, you see, and that is up to you to configure. We offer them by default, so if you install anything related to infrastructure usage, by default will be warnings. We do not see infrastructure utilization as a critical error. You might disagree with this, but it's just like a car is making funny noise and it smells funny, but it's still driving. Okay, it's a warning. Now, the car just stopped driving, that's critical. So, 
you know, uh, high CPU utilization and, and low memory available, this is warning, this is warning for you to do something. But if we get 500 errors, if actually we see user errors, we say it's critical because it's evidence that actually something didn't work. Users, the cars are not driving for whatever reason. So, uh, and in that case, uh, these are our tests. So please disregard the absolute values, but you can say, uh, uh, you can configure this any way you want to, to become the critical. So this could be, this is actually by our default. So we say any performance greater than 30 seconds, it will be critical. Why? Because it will time out. We know that in ArcGIS server, anything 30 seconds actually will be timing out. So we say this is, this is almost equivalent of error. I hope it makes sense. The, the next thing is uh, open and closed. So open is that the alert is pending. Yes, and close that it was uh, that it's that it was closed. If I use this, you know, I oftentimes come here and I select the selection, so I have only prod, and then I filter critical or not. And the next thing is I look at the hours. So that means that even though this alert was closed, but during this timestamp was. Uh, alerting for, for two hours. So you sort by the hours and you say, okay, you know, this, is, this has been, by, you know, uh, 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 alerting for a for, for, for very long time. This was alerting for 16 hours. It's interesting that sometimes, even though you select one day, the, if it's still open, it might be more than 24 hours because the alert might have started three days ago and it's still alerting. So even though you select it just for today, we'll still give you uh, the whole uh, time span. All right. Um, I hope that uh, that gives you a sense. Uh, so so now let's go. So, so you're here and you click on this and you want to see the patterns and we see, okay, you know, this problem is ongoing all the time, up and down, up and down, which is uh, interesting. And you can see the statistics. We, we, we use the statistic average P95. Uh, that's very helpful. If you click on details, so it was one of this, we will go and get you all the information. So here, enable process uh, sample word city. Okay, so we solved the problem. You remember there was a re there was HTV problems and response time, and now we we identify for some reason ArcGIS server uh, cannot process this. Okay, so this is the troubleshooting. If you're a manager. You might ask for, can I just have one number that will give me a summary of how uh, the health of the system? So I, I am too busy for this alert page. I don't need this uh, details. I just need one number that I can use. And we have come up with this concept of uh, availability. So the availability is here. It's a loaded term. It's not uptime. It could be a combination of the uptime and, 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 and uh, and performance. So the way it works is that you define critical alerts, and if the critical alerts happens, we will deduct this time. So if you collect every five minutes and a critical alerts happen at the time, we will deduct five minutes. So every time, and then we do use the ratio for the availability. But you can configure this. Now, why, 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 why do I talk about this? Because we all deal with projects that they say we need to have six nines or four nines or whatever. And every proposal has it. But I have yet to uh, learn how people actually measure that. So we do. That's our approach. And, uh, all right, uh, and then after that, you know, you want to know the users. So always remember that uh, managers are interested and users are driving a lot of, um, uh, okay. So if you are an architect and you say, I, 
I, I, I, I'm not just interested in troubleshooting. I just want to understand the system. So the metadata, you know, wh wh what do we monitor? And we, we monitor typically, well, you can break it down into these, uh, you know, categories, web, ArcGIS, database, infrastructure, and others. Uh, we're running a little bit short on time, so I'm going to, to speed up a little bit. Uh, many of these categories will, will not be applicable to all of you, but a web, for sure. So if you, if you configure HTTP, uh, we will always monitor response time, code, content length. And there are different extensions, for example, HAR file. You know, it's one of these cases somebody said, hey, I, 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 it's not enough for me to monitor one URL. I want to monitor my, the entire application, you know, my entire initial page. And the entire page will have 200 requests. So I don't think I need to know the details. I just want to know that all of them are successful. So the HAR file is just exactly that. You, you record using Fiddler or, or Debugger your, your page, and you save it as a HAR file, and then you play back, and it will give you this extension. Uh, for ArcGIS, we do a lot of things, of course. That's where ArcGIS Monitor shines, ArcGIS Server Portal, GEvent, GeoAnalytics, and others. So um, uh, we have also, uh, we leverage all the web uh, health checks. So um, uh, most of our uh, software has these health checks, and if not, we're developing the custom so in, in that case, it's a web GIS, and we monitor federation and data stores. It's just a lot of things. Uh, ArcSoc Optimizer. So that's, that's an interesting extension. I, I will pause on this because many of you asked. So you know, those of you who are dealing with like 300 services or maybe 1,000 services, the chances are that these services are hot and cold, hot and cold, and it changes all the time. Now, without understanding of, of, of that distribution, the only thing that you can do is just add hardware. That's not very effective. So ArcSoc Optimizer will uh, loop through all the statistics, will identify the utilized and underutilized, and it will set the instances automatically for you based on your configuration. That has proven to be super effective for customers with a high number of services. They were able to reduce the infrastructure up to 80%. So some customers had like you know 15 machines, and now they're running on two machines. Uh, return on investment pretty high. Uh, lots of things on on database Oracle. Uh, that was my previous life as an Oracle DBA. So a lot of geodatabase. Those of you who are dealing with version geodatabase, Delta tables, state lineages, all of it. It's here. Uh, Infrastructure, that's, that, that's, that's, that's uh, very common. Everybody, every tool has it, but we need this because uh, to understand. Uh, before I go, you know, we also uh, manage services. We, we host solution in Amazon, so we're very strong in Amazon monitoring. And we're moving to Azure. Uh, usage is very important. So even though the system is healthy, we want to know transactions per second, users and IP, and maps, like maps, who is using this. Uh, customization, if you want to customize, you can develop uh, using any language as long as you return the JSON signature. And soon there will be a REST API. So that's, uh, that's the repeated request from you is, I want to integrate with other tools. I want to use my own visual, uh, visualization. So the REST API, it's coming. Uh, resources. So help, yeah, start with help. Uh, we're working hard on this. So um, uh, demo. Um, I will, if, if it's time, I will, I, will, I will demo to you. But you can use that. It's public. So uh, feel free to, to go there. Uh, and we are, uh, we're updating this. One of the challenges that we have is that, that we can't publish anything internal IP, so the demo is a little bit uh, not super attractive. Uh, so we, we're to, we will set up something uh, outside of, of um, in, in the cloud, uh, WebGIS, so soon you will see um, a real environment. 
uh, gallery. Uh, if you're new and you don't like uh, reading the documentation, which I haven't met anybody who would say I love reading the documentation, uh, you can go to gallery and you can watch the videos. Um, also, the extensions are there and, and tutorials. Um, so we're, we're trying to make it uh, as uh, easy as possible. And those of you who raised your hands, uh, uh, how to upgrade is, uh, this is the article, and it walks you through how to move for System Monitor 3 to ArcGIS Monitor um, 10.6. Um, if anybody wants the details, stop by at the showcase and we can walk you through, but uh, it's, it's very, it's actually very simple because we can import these uh, collection definition files uh, into a new system, so. Um, there are some questions also about the cost and licensing. I, I'm not the person to talk about that. Uh, talk, to you, uh, talk to your account managers and you know, distributors. Um, but the one thing that, that I can tell you that uh, we have a special discounts for existing users of System Monitor 3. So uh, talk to your, your account manager and your distributor and verify because it's, uh, it's quite affordable. Um, and there are, you know, there are other discounts. There is value discounts. So uh, the idea is to make it accessible. Upcoming features, uh, you know, so I see many distributors and uh, interrosocial is, you know, the first thing that they will be uh, uh, finished in 10.6.1. So uh, localization, that it's a little bit more challenging, but, but it's still uh, in our plans. Uh, REST API, absolutely. That, that's something that we want to uh, get it done this year, Azure this year. And of course, uh, the future is yes, microservices and containers. Uh, Esri is already uh, working on a new generation of the tools, and ArcGIS Monitor uh, is uh, going to, um, to have it available. Um, many of you have existing um, uh, monitoring tools, and you probably are asking yourself a question, you know, uh, do I still need this because I have it, and how do I integrate? And I, I, I can tell you that there are many excellent tools, you know, many, many. And some of them are so clever, gathering a vast amount of data. And this, this may or may not be a good thing, because then you have just a lot of data. Um, and it's not about the data, it's about actionable information. So whatever you do, whatever the tool you choose, even RGS Monitor, you know, have this measure of success. Are we actually fixing problems? Because if we're just, you know, and creating integration projects or new visualization projects and we're not fixing, uh, that, that in my opinion is not the, the, uh, the best way to, to approach this. So that's why I say recommend to evaluate standalone RGS monitor before attempting integrating. Somebody came to our showcase and we had this conversation. I say, Walk before you run. You know, let's let's not work on on a big project of integration. Um, and that's actually our last slide. So, in summary, uh, ArcGIS Monitor monitors not only health of the system but also usage and SLA. Uh, we, we hope that it leads to improved performance and end user satisfaction. They might actually reduce administration cost. It quickly diagnoses these typical cases, unstable infrastructure, overloaded system, a bottleneck. Uh, it's not intrusive, it's scalable, and we are using this internally to monitor uh, over 500 servers. So we're actually using this, I uh, mentioned managed services. Uh, many of the requirements are coming from, uh, from managed services. So we have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, we have a choice of uh, a demo of, or questions, and I will start with questions. How about that? Okay. Installations, installations. 
The question is, is there a dependency on ArcGIS server uh, version? Uh, no, there is no dependency. Actually, uh, uh, the 10.6 the is only release package, but there is really no dependency. There are some API calls to ArcGIS server, like admin API calls, that of course uh, it hasn't been always available. So if you had ArcGIS server 10.0, there was no admin and PI. So if you try to do it, then it will not be there. Uh, yes? Um, if you're spinning up and down certain environments, is there a recommended process to like, stop the monitoring growth from like, spinning down environments? Um, because like, often for uh, developed environments, we sort of have them up for you know, certain hours and spin that environment back down and using the cloud and services we have. Uh, let me let me make sure that I understand. So, when it comes to restarting ArcGIS monitor components, or the actual environment that you're actually monitoring, so you're, you're actually stopping the okay. environment. So, so the so the question is, when we have a target production uh, system, well, we we don't control this. So, if if our target is not available, ArcGIS monitor will knock on the door. And it will send you, after, after three times, it will send you a warning, a data not collected. And that's a sign that nobody answered. And we'll keep doing this. And we'll keep doing this. If you, you're managing both cases, can you stop? Yes. Yes, you can stop the collection. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can stop the collection. You can stop the window service. Yes, you can do this. Um, yes. Can you set it up? Um, right now, we don't have it. Um, that feature, we're working on concepts of uh, uh, maintenance window and working hours. Uh, so, in that case, you know, that will be available. Uh, the idea was not so much for monitoring, the idea was more for reporting. Because what we have is, when, when you're doing at night maintenance, yes, and the ArcGIS server recycles on your, your, your rebooting system, your alerts will show everything is red, blood. So you come in the morning, you mark, oh gosh, you know, everything looks so terrible. Uh, what happened is that in the middle of the night, you just had a maintenance. So for aesthetics, we just want to remove it. Also, to give you the proper um, availability. You remember this uptime? So you might say, I, I, don't, I don't want my maintenance to be part of that. And we can leverage this, extend this, and actually not even monitor, but I don't know. Um, ArcGIS Monitor also has a task framework, so it's almost like a window schedule, and you can, you can run things uh, uh, leveraging that, but I think it's slightly different from what you were asking. Um, yes? Is the charts you showed auto refresh as well? Say again, please. Is the charts you showed auto refresh as well? Ch like you showed a page with charts on it for uptime and things like that. Does that page auto refresh? Yeah, so, uh, so w w while I'm answering, I will actually go to the demo side, which is available to you as well. And uh, you might, uh, uh, so this is the demo. Now, this page, if it comes back, uh, uh, there's something about the, the network, okay, it's coming. Um, so these main pages have auto refresh. So alerts, availability, and home, they, they will auto refresh. Is that what you're asking? Well, I was asking, um, you clicked on one of them and pulled up a chart. I was asking if that chart will auto refresh. Oh, I see. Uh, chart will not auto refresh, but you could, you could do some tricks like, um, um, the way, I'm sorry, this network is, so when it comes back, there's, uh, on the right side, there will be last 12 hours or last six hours or, yeah, so you can, you can just click one of these and it will not auto refresh. Uh, 
Um, now it is. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. So the ArcSoc optimizer is the only one that it uh, has a uh, right feature. So we'll literally loop through every service and we'll, we'll, we'll restart and reset the, the, the instances. Um, this whole action center is a, it's a, it's an area that we're investigating, but, but this takes us to the completely different level. Yes, the moment that we start messing with your environment, that, that's, <coughs> That's a different, different uh, a challenge. So we, we need to be very careful. Yes. Uh, any plans to port to Linux or use cloud native databases like the IOMDB? Uh, at this point, we we we're, we're bound to uh, MongoDB as a as a repository, and also all the services. Uh, uh, we we use Windows to to deploy this. So. Uh, for now, you, you, you have to use the uh, Windows environment to install ArcGIS Monitor. But of course, you can monitor sure. Linux. Yes. Uh, uh, we're, we're already thinking about the new generation of ArcGIS Monitor, and uh, that's one of the considerations. Uh, but there are... It's, it's not easy to select the right repository with the right licensing uh, uh, that, that uh, you know, we, we, we process uh, 10,000 requests per minute. So we need certain, certain throughput, you know. Uh, it could grow even higher. Uh, it would be nice to have Postgres, but even with Postgres, they're, they're licensed drivers, so we're analyzing all of it. I mean, if you have, if you, if anybody has really good ideas for this, I'm open. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, so we have an extension uh, system log parser and parses IS log, ELB logs, and it will give you the breakdown. Also. It will give you the detail uh, requests per IP, so you can have like a raw data. Now that's only for troubleshooting, but it's super helpful. Yes, when when you're saying, okay, I, I see failures, like the HTTP failed, but I want to see what 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 other uh, errors happened. Uh, so it's it's available. Yes. So it's not going to give you the same throughput and transactional type information. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yes, it has. Um, I, I don't know if we have it uh, in this demo, but the answer is yes, yes. Uh, so if you, if you go to ArcGIS server and you look at the throughput and you go to this uh, web log and you look at the throughput, that should be very close. Yes? Uh, does, does the MongoDB have to exist on the same server? No. So I could have an external MongoDB that I already managed? That I can yes, so let me, let me just t tell you how. Yes, so... Uh, in our config, there is a config file and pretty much says, where is the host name of the MongoDB and what is the port? Okay. Uh, and if you deploy it on a remote machine as a service, uh, if you know how to do it, absolutely it will work. Is there a script to, t to create the tables on a separate piece or will it take care of that during installation? Uh, it, if, so the, I would install our vanilla, uh -huh. uh, and then I would go and to the config and change that uh, to point to a different Mongo and restart report server. And I will just create a new database there. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. services that uh, they're doing, uh, they don't have indexes on certain columns and they're doing full, full table scans on all kinds of data. Yes, so you, 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 you can do it. It, it, it's a multi-step and multi-configuration, but 
you know, let's, let's just try to answer this. Number one is anybody who is publishing data, you will see a CPU spike in memory. So this is the first thing. And you, you might say, well, I don't know who did it. Okay, I get it. Then as a ne a next configuration is how many services do I have on my system? So you monitor. So suddenly you have these two spikes, yes? So you see the correlation that CPU and memory and number of services, they correlate. So you're like, okay. And then the second thing is you, once they publish, you look at the busy time per transaction of the service. And if it has no indexes, then instead of being 0.1 second, it will be 10 seconds. And you're like, okay, mystery solved. Slow service, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, but the idea is end to end. If you're looking for just one solution, you know, it's, it's, yes. If you install everything on one server, including MongoDB, what kind of hardware are you looking for? I, so the, the system requirement says start with four core CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and 50 gigs of disk. And then, you know, add if you, if you need to. But this should take you far. Now, why, why do I say far? If you, you know, if you, if you monitor every five minutes, you have a choice of monitoring every 60 seconds, but if you, if you say, no, I actually don't need to have this resolution, so then you immediately increase your capacity 500%, yes? But there are others, they say, no, these are mission critical systems and I wanna know as soon as possible. Play with this, add hardware. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it's, it's not super resource intensive. And even if you run out of the CPU and memory, the worst thing has happened, it would just start lagging so the, the dots will not be every 60 seconds. They might be like every 61 seconds. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but I do not recommend you to run ArcGIS Monitor on a machine that is consistently s starved. I mean, uh, that's not the idea. Okay, yes. Okay, so, so the ArcGIS monitor does it for you. There's already maintenance routine. The, the raw data is kept for 14 days in one collection, and then aggregate data is kept uh, forever. Uh, but the, the compression is so efficient then, uh, that there's no need for us to delete this. Uh, for those of you who are dealing with big data, big databases, it's very expensive to delete anything. Just l l let it, leave it alone. <laughs> uh, but, but to answer your question, I have not seen anybody who would grow over 100 gigs. So that's nothing. Yes? I did run into an issue with uh, System Monitor 3 where the Mongo database log file got too big for the disk. Mongo database log file, yeah. So in System Monitor, at some point we had by default, when you, when you create a services, you can specify the log level in Mongo. All you need to do is just say, don't, don't have this detail. Uh, now we, we don't have that, so it's much, much smaller. Yes. yes. <laughs> wow. I'm an easy pleaser, I love this thing. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Uh, yes. So when you say 10.51, you're referring to ArcGIS platform, yes? ArcGIS server. ArcGIS server. So I, as I mentioned, has no dependency. So you can, you, can, you can use System Monitor 3 and Monitor 10.51, or you can download the... the yes. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah.